Bitcoin is making a beautiful move up. But what does this mean for the rest of the market? In this video, I'll give you my short-term and long-term outlook for Bitcoin, the US dollar, the S&P 500, the Nasdaq, Gold, and Tesla. I'll also show you my calculation for my 2024 price target on gold. It's going to be a wild ride, so buckle up. Here's a more detailed breakdown of what you'll learn in this video, Bitcoin, I'm bullish in the short term, but bearish in the midterm. US dollar, I think the dollar will continue to sell off in the short term. S&P 500, I think the S&P will go up and fill the gap, but then roll over to the downside. Nasdaq, I think the Nasdaq may test the upper level here, but ultimately roll over to the downside. Gold, I think gold is in the process of making an inverse head and shoulders pattern. My 2024 price target on gold is $2,500. Tesla, I'm not sure which way Tesla is going to break out, but I think it will be significant. If you're interested in learning more about my technical analysis and trading strategies, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. Subscribe to my channel for more insights into the future of Bitcoin and the crypto market. And let's get started. So Bitcoin's making a beautiful move up here. Now remember, last week we talked about this and I'm going to review what I said last week. So last week we had this beautiful little consolidation pattern. And as long as we were in this pattern, it was a 75% chance we were going to move higher. We then broke it. And I said, as long as it still holds this area here, right, all down here, as long as we don't trade below here, you remain bullish, but the probabilities are about 65%. So it hurt the probabilities a little, but look at what price is doing now. We're starting to move up. Now, if we can get back above this level here and actually close above it, which is around 28,200, if you get a daily close above 28,200, I do think you re-attack this 29,000 level right in here, and I still think it's a chance you could retest 30 to 31,000. Me being slightly bullish here in the near term doesn't mean that midterm I am bearish or bullish. In fact, I am more bearish in the in the midterm versus remaining a bull. This is very short-term price action, but beautiful move on Bitcoin today. Let's watch that 28,200 level. Next up, let's take a look at the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar did see some upside on Friday. Why would the dollar go up on Friday when markets, yields, and the VIX were, were moving like they were? Remember, VIX was up, dollar and yields were down. Uh, excuse me, yields and, and uh, yeah, yeah, yields and bonds. Bonds, obviously, were rallying while yields were coming down. And the answer, again, on Friday, people were buying protection for the U.S. dollar. Today, that doesn't, you don't need that protection. You're seeing a little bit of selling in the U.S. dollar. That's another helping hand to the stock market. So here's your S&P daily chart, your spiders, your SPY. If we look at this, we can see again that we obviously came down into this level right here. We pierced this line, but look, that's the 200 moving average right there. So you had the 200, you bounced. Now you retrace Thursday and Friday. We're starting to trade up. I still am in the camp. The S&P is going to go up and fill this gap. I even think there's a chance still that we go up and touch this Hell level yeah. up here. Now that's your short-term outlook for me. Having said that, once we get up there, I think the pressure then starts to build for a rollover that potentially takes us much, much further to the Hell downside. Yeah. So again, short-term, very short-term, meaning over the next few days, next week or so, I am bullish on the markets, but over the next multiple months, I remain bearish on the markets. And this is where time frame actually matters. Because if you're like me and you're a swing trader, you have to position yourself in the short term and then also kind of keep your eye on the longer term. NASDAQ again, sideways chop. Again, I do think the NASDAQ may test this upper level here, but ultimately, again, I think we roll over. You haven't hit your 200 moving average on your daily chart yet. That's all the way down here. Notice how the 200 coexists with this area right down here. And again, if I zoom out a little bit, we can see this pivot point here goes right through here. And then that is right with the 200 moving average sloping up. That is my target over the next couple months. All right, one to two month target. I still think we're headed lower. Even if we get a short term bounce here, I think we're eventually headed to that level on the QQQ. Very possibly, by the way, by year end. I know there's a lot of talk about, oh, year end rally, Santa Claus rally. As of now, I'm not seeing it. Doesn't mean it can't happen. But right now, I'm not seeing that as something that's going to get my attention in the charts. All right. Now, let's talk about where we're going to go here. 
So we're getting the pullback in gold today. I think that continues for a couple days, but it's bullish. You might say, well, how the heck is a pullback in gold bullish? Well, the answer is very simple. When you run a marathon, do you think you can run another marathon right after and another right after without breaks? You need to rejuvenate. You need to consolidate. Consolidation, bullish consolidation. Each marathon you run, you get stronger, but you need to take time in between to build your kind of stamina back up, your energy back up. So you had this move in gold. Now you want to look for something like this, right? Some sideways chop, maybe holding the 1900 level or the 1885 level. And eventually, in my opinion, this is where we are going. Remember, I am not a fortune teller. I use the charts to put probabilities in my favor. I'll never get to be a perfect trader. That doesn't exist in this world. But I can get my odds of success probably to 70 to 80%, which again, in this game, puts you in the Hall of Fame. All right, so that's what we have here on gold. If I zoom out on the bigger time frame, so we have the bigger time frame. There you can see your 200 moving average with the down sloping line. And eventually, my guess is we're going to consolidate here and then go and retest this. Now, one of the things I've shown you guys on the gold chart is that I believe we're in the process of making an inverse head and shoulder pattern. So let me do this right now, right? So basically what we can do is we can move the chart over here and we can do a calculation. We can say, okay, if this is a shoulder and this is a head, are we now beginning to make the shoulder over here? Inverse head and shoulders. Now to do this calculation to find out what my 2024 target is on gold, what you do is you take the lowest point here and you shoot a straight line right up to that neckline. Now, this distance right here, and in fact, we can do that really quickly on the chart. We're going to take the lowest point and we're going to drive that line right up. That's a move of approximately $450, right? And again, it's a little hard because you can see it right up there, but it's about $450. And so the thought process is, is that when we get the breakout, so if this head and shoulders plays out here, right, let's say like this, what you're going to do is when you break the neckline here over here, you go up $450 from that break point. All right. That puts us at an approximate target of 24 to 2,500. All right. You're probably looking at around 2,500, which interestingly enough is a major even number. So right there, guys, I just showed you my calculation for 2024's price target on gold. I think that again, into the end of the year 2023 here, we probably go up and retest that level. I don't really expect a breakout this year. Maybe we get close, but I think in 2024, you see that next big move in gold. I'll quickly flipping over to Tesla. Tesla's a much trickier read for me. I'm going to be honest with you guys. It's still holding support on this trend line, a very clear trend line. So it still has support there. But again, if I mark that trend line off, and we then go to this trend line here, it's still holding this trend line as well, right? So, I mean, this is really absolutely an amazing chart because price is holding in this thing. Now, what does this tell me? This tells me when it's in a wedge pattern for this long and it's coming to a head, it tells me that on earnings, you're either going to break out or break down and the following move will be significant. So this is how wedge patterns work is that essentially... When you get a wedge pattern and it comes to the head, right? Price is trading. Whichever way it breaks, when you get to that high, you're either going to have a big move down or a big move up. Which way is it going to go? I'm not going to pretend to know. This is a tough one, folks. But whichever way it breaks, my guess is it goes significantly in that direction.